In the evening he would slip into her chambers, dressed only in his nightgown, with a bonnet on his head, with a lantern in one hand and a sword in the other, and a bottle of water under his arm. The Princess Marie-Lise of Orleans, famed for her beauty, had no right to choose a life companion. She was the daughter of Henrietta of England and Philip, Duke of Orleans. Since Henrietta had an affair on the side with Louis XIV, her husband's brother, it is suspected that Mary Louise of Orleans may have been the illegitimate daughter of the King of France himself. Mary Louise was brought up away from her crown family. She was born in 1662. At the age of four, she inherited a substantial sum of money from her beloved grandmother and of Austria. And as an eight-year-old child, the French princess lost her mother. Henrietta of England died suddenly. According to the official version from Peritonitis, and according to the second wife of the Duke of Orleans from Poisoning, it was Elizabeth Charlotte Palatinate, the second wife of the Duke of Orleans, was able to replace Mary Louise's birth mother. At court it was rumored that this bright little girl will marry the French Dauphin, heir to the throne. And no one was embarrassed by the fact that the future spouses would be each other's cousins. But in 1672, plans for Mary Louise changed. In that unfortunate year, Princess Maria Theresa, the five-year-old daughter of the King of France, died of tuberculosis. She was to be married to King Charles II of Spain. Yes, this marriage was also a close marriage, as Charles II and Queen Maria Theresa of Spain, mother of Maria Theresa of France, were brother and sister-in-law. France and Spain were often on the brink of war and needed political marriages to keep both countries in check. So Louis XIV replaced his daughter with his 16-year-old niece, Marie Louise. Upon hearing that her hand was given to the King of Spain, the girl fainted. Her despair was understandable to many. Charles II was the product of incest among the Habsburgs, mentally retarded, with a protruding lip, because of which he could not speak clearly and constantly drooled. Charles II had epileptic episodes, intestinal disorders, and he could hardly move on his own. All of his portraits were somewhat embellished by artists for a generous fee. Mary Louise of Orleans, according to the description of her contemporaries, was a beautiful and graceful princess, who inherited beauty and fine features from her mother, and black hair from her father. While in France she received a thorough education, she knew Latin, sang, danced and musiced well. A few portraits are likely to cast doubt on her beauty, but they were painted in Spain, so perhaps she was trying to look somewhat like such an unattractive husband. According to one rumor of contemporaries of the time, Mary Louise also fainted on her first wedding night. She was disgusted with her husband, and justifiably so, despite Charles II's good manners. However, it is still unknown whether their marriage ended at all. The king was accused of incompetence in these matters, and the queen, oppressed by the marriage, was accused of infertility. One monk even suggested that Charles perform an unusual, even sacrilegious, exorcism by rubbing relics on the bodies of the couple's bed. However, this procedure was ineffective, and the royal couple never had children. This is, of course, not surprising to us, given the health of Charles II. Nevertheless, the common goal of conceiving a child brought the couple closer together. Mary Lees resigned herself to her fate. It is likely that in her own way she even loved her husband. And perhaps, they would have lived happily ever after, had it not been for the sudden death of the Queen February 12, 1689. Officially of natural causes, but the court was buzzing with rumors of her poisoning as an unwanted, Baron Queen. After a horseback ride, Mary Louise felt a pain in her stomach. At first it was mistaken for a common ailment, as the Queen, who was apathetic most of the time, had gained a lot of weight in the last years of her life due to her addiction to food. She consumed large quantities of sugar per day. But these days, it can be assumed that Mary Louise had acute appendicitis or pancreatic problems. Maria Louisa died the next night. She was only 26 years old at the time. It was only after her death that the Spanish began to remember the deceased queen with kindness. In France, a common voice spread the image of the young queen languishing in Madrid, in a gloomy court, a hostage of the king and a people who hated everything French. The antipathy of the Spaniards to their queen was undeniable, as was the prejudice of the French against Spain. But Marie Louise was above all a shy young woman, aware of her duties but totally unprepared for the challenges imposed by her role as queen. Charles II remembered his graceful and beloved Maria Louise to the end of his days. Shortly before his death, 
The king opened Maria Luisa's tomb and looked at her with morbid admiration before running away in fear. Thus was born the legend of Marie-Louise, the French heraldic lily fluttering in the south wind of Spain.